Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday over here in the Atlantic. Still fairly quiet in here, though not terribly dead for June. We got a few scattered thunderstorm areas popping all around here. Definitely looks like the tropics. We have a low amplitude wave here coming to the islands, and this is going to be moving west northwestward here. The other feature that we see is a very well defined little monsoonal circulation, smaller than normal here, just north of Panama. And this is sitting down here. When this wave comes west northwest and interacts with with it. It'll be interesting to see what comes of it to see if these two can try to lift a little bit farther northwest and get something going in this area in four to five days. There's a broad upper trough right now over the west northwest Atlantic and there's some dry air overlaid to the north of this tropical wave which is going to keep wind shear strong in here for the next few days and keep this low as it comes towards the west northwest. But once it gets in here upper ridging is going to start building a little bit more aloft in here because this area is conducive for warm air to develop aloft and this will expand and allow this area to become a little bit more conducive for tropical development in a few days by this weekend or so. And look what we have on the GFS. By day six, something developed in here came across the Yucatan, and we have a weak area of low pressure sitting northwest of the Yucatan by day six. And the area of precipitation is a little bit northeast of it here. The GFS keeps it aligned on the west side of the ridge during most of its life, ends up bringing it up this way and bringing the precipitation right into the Louisiana, Mississippi area. And looking at the no gap zero Z, it's got a stronger storm here north of the Yucatan moving north heading up this way and uh, the run before that had a hurricane in here with even lower pressure so the no gaps is starting to show the same kind of deal again came up through here so consistency on the formation area on these two models Here's the European ensembles. This is day five. Now this is interesting on the operational run, which I'm not going to show here. The European actually brings a little something out of here and has a very weak low developing right here near the coast and it comes across the Bay of Campeche like this. Doesn't come north, so therefore it stays weak, but it does show development here. This is the ensembles. You can see the mean spread with the members showing variance here, indicating that some of the members besides the operational are showing development with this, or at least weak development. And you you can see what happens. The variance moves across here. The operational is going to have the low down here. And then by day seven, you can see the variance is up here, a little bit farther north on the ensemble mean than the operational run has it. And of course, these are, these are the early runs. This is the first run the European even hints at something like this. So we're going to be watching these models to watch for some consistency. But you can see what the, what's going on with this pattern that I've been talking about. For the end of this month and for the first week of July, we're going to be watching for development and possible tropical mischief. This pattern, again, I showed you the SOI indices yesterday. We now have an area of sinking air moving in over Tahiti and the Central Pacific. And this is forcing air eastward and causing it to rise in this area of the world. We had Beatrice form out of this pattern. It only makes sense that this burst of upward motion is going to continue east and focus itself over the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico for the next round of upward motion that may try to spawn something in here that tries to move northwest or in that general direction. The pattern makes sense, and although it's going to be hard to get development given that it's still June and it's still early in the season, we've got the ingredients. We have tropical waves coming across into a strong monsoonal circulation that's going to be trying to lift north into the western Caribbean or southern Gulf of Mexico. As I've been saying for a while now, this needs to be watched closely. You can see the MJO. Here it comes. Coming around in here, you're going to see it come right into quadrant one, not quadrant phase, octant. I need to get that down. Uh, octant one over here favoring upward motion in that area that we talked about and the models are now starting to hone in a little bit more on this. Now for a minute I'm going to assume that this develops, not saying that it will or my opinion on whether it will, but I'm going to assume that it develops so we can look a little bit at the steering pattern, although it's very far out. There's going to be some interesting things to deal with if this actually does try to develop. This is day four on the GFS ensembles. You can see that there's a big Texas ridge sitting right in here. Here's the big Atlantic ridge. There's a break right here as of day four. And based on the model timing right now, the system would be starting to develop southeast of the Yucatan right at about this point. And looking at this alleyway right now, we'd say, oh, it's going over here. But if we go just 24 hours later, um, this starts to close off pretty rapidly in here. And this ridge starts to build in pretty strong. And this may be why the European brings the low 
west-northwest across the Bay of Campeche, fairly far south, kind of like an, uh, like Hurricane Alex did last year, our first storm last season, um, and brings it into Mexico because of this big ridge that sits up here. Now, the interesting thing is that this trough back here ends up diving in, and by the time we get to a couple more days out, we have a trough sitting in here that brings the nose of the ridge a little bit farther east, and there's the chance that the storm would be able to come around it if there was one sitting there in six days, but it's going to come down to timing with this. We're going to have a weak break lingering in here. So you could have a number of possibilities. We could have a storm that tries to come north and then cuts straight northeast. We could have a storm that comes in, gets blocked, and has to come farther west, or perhaps comes into Mexico like this. Or we could have one that comes straight northwest into Mexico like the European hinted at in its first operational run that was showing this entity. So we've got a couple possibilities as we always do because it's a long way away from this situation ever evolving if it does and some of the models aren't on board yet we're waiting for consistency but again we've been waiting for the models to show us something that could come of this pattern we knew that this pattern had great potential to bring us something we just didn't quite know when we've been watching for these waves again it makes sense we've been watching for one wave after another to come across one wave failed we have another that's coming into an area of a defined monsoonal circulation here that could get together and try to come northwest it makes sense that we could get mr out of this and if the models start to support that we have to be watching even more closely one more thing I want to mention is over here in the Western Pacific, it's sometimes interesting to, to teleconnect the Western Pacific with the Atlantic a week to 10 to 15 days later, as sometimes there are some interesting connections that go on. Right now, there's two tropical cyclones here. I think this one is Haima, and this one is Miri, or something like that. I can't really remember their names right now. If I, or if I turn on the tropical forecast points, I'm not sure how well you can see these. This is Miri's track going up here towards the northwest. Here's Haima, moving west-northwest. West. Now what's interesting is that there's a big ridge sitting over here. Remember that when we're teleconnecting with the Western Pacific, uh, Tokyo is basically the equivalent of Cape Hatteras in the Atlantic. So this would be the Carolinas coastline, and this would be the Gulf of Mexico somewhere over here in China. So we've got a big ridge sitting over here, which is teleconnecting nicely to the southwest U.S. ridge over the Rockies and the Western Plains next week. And that's sitting over there. We have a big Pacific ridge sitting in here with a break in between, much like this model forecast that I showed you back here and this storm is supposed to move up into this weakness whereas this storm got caught underneath the ridge and is moving west and in a sense this is showing us the two possibilities for if a storm forms in the Atlantic either it comes north into the weakness and takes advantage or it gets stuck under the ridge and comes this way but either way with the SOI and the MJO pattern the way they are it makes sense that with this going on here we should be watching in the Atlantic for a similar kind of situation in a week to 10 days or so and we are indeed going to watch for that within four to five days a little bit sooner than that we'll be watching for this to start to get going as this wave moves in here. Not guaranteed, but the pattern favors it, and the models are starting to catch on to something going on, so we'll be watching the situation very closely over the next several days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.